Well, folks, uh, as you can see, our service for this morning is going to be a bit different. Uh, I'm recording this from the campus of Biola University in La Mirada near uh, Los Angeles, California. Erica and I are down here with Hannah and Abby uh, at the Unite West Conference, a youth conference that our denomination is putting on. Uh, and we are having a great week so far. It's been wonderful weather. Uh, we're having a lot of fun, wonderful, great speakers, great worship. Uh, not just the girls, but even Erica and I are being challenged and being encouraged and uh, really sensing uh, the spirit of God at work here while we're together. Uh, as you obviously can tell, things are going to be a little bit different for our worship time this morning, uh, both in person and uh, virtually. Uh, so we've had to be a little bit creative about what we're doing virtually, so this will look a little bit different, but both uh, opportunities for worship are going to be a very intentional time for prayer. So we'll be guided in prayer with some scripture readings, with uh, some reflections or, or even poetry, uh, and then we'll have some prayer uh, prompts that will be given uh, to lead us each into this time of prayer together. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for the ways that God is going to work in this prayer time, and I'm excited for the ways that this will continue to cultivate the deep and rich prayer life that Emmanuel already has. Uh, so blessings as uh, you engage in this time of worship uh, together. Let me open us with a call to worship. Uh, this is from the Book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, and then 25 and 26. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Let us worship God together. mountain 
please be seated. Okay, so let's transition to our prayer time now. Uh, at, at Emmanuel, we believe that prayer is a foundational part of our faith. It's a time when we humbly bring ourselves, our whole selves to God. When we, and then when we pause and listen to what God has to say to us. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna have a number of short readings and we're gonna have some prayer prompts on certain themes. And these uh, readings and the prompts are adapted, uh, by, adapted from a book called Space for God, Study and Practice of Spirituality and Prayer, uh, written by Don Postma. And so when prompted, you'll have some minutes uh, at the end of these readings to pray either to yourself or even with uh, the other folks in your household uh, to maybe talk about and then pray on these various themes. Uh, so blessings as you engage in this time of prayer together. Matthew 14, 22 to 25 says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. 
Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. At a retreat, Margaret Holaska shared this poem she had written, titled, Covenant. God knocks at my door, seeking a home for his son. Rent is cheap, I say. I don't want to rent, I want to buy, says God. I'm not sure I want to sell, but you might come in and look around. I think I will, says God. I might let you have a room or two. I like it, says God. I'll take the two. You might decide to give me more someday. I can wait, says God. I'd like to give you more, but it's a bit difficult. I need some space for me. I know, says God, but I'll wait. I like what I see. Hmm, maybe I can let you have another room. I really don't need that much. Thanks, says God. I'll take it. I like what I see. I'd like to give you the whole house, but I'm not sure. Think on it, says God. I wouldn't put you out. Your house would be mine, and my son would live in it. You'd have more space than you'd ever had before. I don't understand at all. I know, says God, but I can't tell you about that. You'll have to discover it for yourself. That can only happen if you let me have the whole house. A bit risky, I say. Yes, says God, but try me. I'm not sure. I'll let you know. I can wait, says God. I like what I see. And now, let's go to God in prayer. I'm going to read from Luke 15, 11 to 24. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, 
How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Let us go to a time of reflection and prayer. I'm going to read from Colossians 3, 12, and 16 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Louis B. Smeads wrote this after realizing he had survived a very serious illness. I was seized with a frenzy of gratitude, possessed. My arms rose straight up by themselves. A hundred pound weight could not have held them at my side. My hands open, my fingers spread, waving, twisting, while I bless the Lord above for the almost unbearable goodness of being alive on this good earth in this good body at this present time. I was flying outside of myself, high, held in weightless lightness, as if my earthly existence needed no ground to rest in, but was hung in space with only love to keep it aloft. It was then I learned that gratitude is the best feeling I would ever have the ultimate joy of living. 
It was better than anything, better than winning a lottery, better than watching your daughter graduate from college, better and deeper than any other feeling. It is perhaps the genesis of all other really good feelings in the human repertoire. I am sure that nothing in life can ever match the feeling of being held in being by the gracious energy percolating from the abyss where beats the loving heart of God. Let us go to God in thanksgiving. Let us read from Genesis 32, 22 to 30. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Don Postuma writes, Jacob received the name Israel because, as his divine opponent said, you wrestled with God and with men and prevailed, and he received a blessing. He emerged from the struggle physically lame but spiritually regenerated. I saw God face to face, and my life is spared. The name Israel, the God wrestler, was later given to a whole race of people, a people whose protests often mixed with their praise, not as a sign of lack of faith, but as a sign of depth of faith, as an expression of love. And Christians do not shun that name. We call ourselves the new Israel, the new God wrestlers. God is our lover, but we wrestle with our divine lover just as we struggle with our human lovers. 
because we know there's a basis of trust beneath our differences and disagreements and disappointments. We're able to argue with those we love as well as relate warmly to them. Speaking our anger is a form of communication. It may even presuppose love between persons. I dare to be myself to reveal what I really feel to those whom I love. Could it be the same with God? The closer we are to God, the more we dare to say what's going on in our minds and in our guts. We belong to God, even with our negative, hostile attitudes. Somehow the psalmist, Jacob, Job, Jeremiah, and Hannah dared. Even our Savior struggled with God in the Garden of Gethsemane and sweat blood. Let us go to God in prayer with our struggles. Let's read Luke 9, 28 to 36. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. As we prepare to close this time, let's reflect on giving glory to God.
And now, let us join together in praying with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I hope uh, that this time was, was rich for you, uh, that you sensed God's presence as you were praying, as you were led to pray in these different areas of, of life and reflect on these different areas of your life and your walk with Jesus. Now hear this benediction. The, ra the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God loves you, and so do I.